So that last video ended up being a lot longer than what I was hoping for. So I'm really going to try and go through this one quickly as well. Same thing. We did this in class already. So that's why I'm trying to go through this quickly. Um, what we're discussing now or going over now is a binomial experiment. All right. So when we're doing a binomial experiment, there's four things that must occur that you must be able to um, check off in order to do this. Uh, one is there must be a fixed number of trials. So what we were doing before with our distribution, probability distribution tables is it was looking at it as if infinitely many were occurring. We weren't saying we're flipping a coin 10 times, but we were just saying what is the average of getting ahead? We're not saying let's roll a dice 20 times, but what is the average if we were to roll a dice infinitely many times? So we need to have a fixed number of trials, 10, 20, whatever it is, but it needs to be fixed. Each trial can only have two outcomes or their outcomes can be reduced to two outcomes, meaning if you're taking a test, you have the options of A, B, C, and D. However, if A is the right answer, then that means you're either right or you're wrong. So B, C, and D are actually the same in the sense of this experiment because you can either be right or wrong. Or the words that we're going to use is it's going to be either a success or fail. Right, so it needs to be able to be reduced to two outcomes or be two outcomes in the beginning. Um, and then three and four go hand in hand. Uh, they need to be independent of each other, meaning that if we do our first um, experiment, that it can't affect the outcome of the second. So when we flip a coin, if you get a heads on the first flip, it doesn't, it won't affect getting a heads or tails on the second. It's always going to be one hand. But if we have a box of balls and we have uh, red and then we have black. And if we pick a ball out and don't replace it, then that means this red, and maybe we pick a red ball, that means the odds of getting a red ball has now changed. It went from two thirds to one half. So this one would not be independent, they would be dependent. So the reason why they need to be independent is the probability of a success must, be, must remain the same for each trial, All right? And the outcomes of a binomial experiment and the corresponding probabilities and outcomes are called a binomial distribution. All right, so we're just focused on a binomial distribution. Um, it's not that hard. It's just there's a lot that you kind of have to think about for each question. Um, there's about four variables that you will substitute in for, um, but it's actually pretty simple once you do that. All right, so these are the variables that you'll have to know. Um, you'll have to know P and Q, and P is a probability of a success. So when we're looking at the um, when we're looking at something, we will say what are the odds of flipping a heads, or what are the odds of doing this or whatever. Um, it's just P represents that event taking place, whatever we want to occur. And Q is the odds of the failure, meaning what are the odds that P won't happen? So if we know that P is equal to 0.3, if we want to solve for Q, well, we know that all of our probabilities have to add up to one. So we can solve for Q by finding its complement. Right? Then the other thing that you'll need to remember or know is N represents the total number of trials. So if we're doing 30 trials, that's N. And if we were looking at only eight of those happening, being a success, then X is our success. Right? And something that we discussed in class, this is a formula, you will be getting this, but this here is actually our combination. So in your calculator, calculator you can use your combination. Uh, instead of doing this out by hand, you can use your combinations um, on your calculator. Right? But you will be getting this formula, um, so you don't necessarily have to remember it. Or memorize it. All right, let's just go ahead and answer a couple of questions. Like I said, I kind of skimmed through this really quickly, but we did this in class. All right, when you're doing this, there is something though that you must be able to identify. And what you need to be able to identify is what are we actually trying to solve? Here it says exactly five. Here it says at most three. And here it says at least three. All of these we will answer differently. All right, we will use the formula of our NCR times our P raised to the um, X, P raised to the X uh, times Q raised to the N minus X. And we know that in this formula, we do our N, our total number of trials, and then we will do our X. So it's our combinations of how many successful trials we can take out of the total. All right. So it says here, a public opinion report of 5% of Americans are afraid of being alone in a house at night. If a random sample of 20 Americans is selected, find the probabilities by using the binomial table, we're not using that. We're going to calculate it by hand, right? So we're not going to use a binomial table at all. We're just going to calculate it by hand. So that there are exactly five people in the sample who are afraid of being alone at night. So what we need to do is we need to identify what is our N, what is our X, what is our P, and what is our Q. 
Our N is the total number of trials that we have, and it says um, 20 Americans are being selected. So N is 20. X is our successful trials. So for A, it says exactly five. So when it's exactly, we just need to put that number because there's we're looking of what are the odds of us picking five people. So those are our successful trials. Our P is the probability of that successful event taking place. It says 5% of Americans are afraid of being alone in the house. So if we're trying to pick people who are being alone in the house, that means each person we have a 5% chance of picking. So the probability of the success is 5%. Our failure would be our one minus our 5%, which would then be 0.95. So our total number is 20. Then we will take our combinations and we're looking for a successful, uh, a success of five events. And then we will multiply this by the, the probability of, a, of the successful event happening by how many we want times the probability of, of the failure times by however many failures we want, which would then be if we have 20 total trials and five of them are successful, that means 20 minus five or 15 will be failures. So we can type this in our calculator. So we 20 NCR five times 0.05 raised to the fifth power times 0.95 raised to the 15th power. And this will give us an answer of approximately 0 0.002 or roughly a 0.2% chance of happening. All right, so that's exactly. For the next one, at most, it's going to be a little bit trickier because at most means three, two, one, or zero. All of those are at most. All right, so when you do this one, we actually are going to have to do a little bit more because we have multiple things that we're trying to look for. We're going to have to find the odds of zero events, zero successful events of one, of two, and of three. And then we would add up all those probabilities because this is all talking about one event taking place. Just like when we were doing earlier, uh, what are the odds of getting a king or an ace? Since that was talking about one thing happening, but we were looking at the odds of a king or an odds of the ace. We added it to get the total probability. Here we will find the odds of zero, one, two, or three events taking place. And then we will add up all those probabilities. So let's go ahead and write this out. We have 20. We're taking our combinations of zero events taking place. So it'll be times the probability of 0 0.05 raised to our successful, which is zero, times our failure, which is 0 0.95 raised to the successful, which is uh, 20. So then when we calculate this, it'll be 20 NCR zero times 0 0.05 raised to zero power, right? So we sorry, 20. NCR zero times 0 0.05 raised to zero power uh, times 0.95 raised to the 20 power. And this will give us approximately 0 0.36, right? Then we will go ahead and find the odds of one event taking place. So it'll be NCR one, and we 0 0.05 raised to the one times 0.95 raised to the 19, because if we have one successful event, that means 19 were unsuccessful. So then we will go ahead and we'll plug this in our calculator. And this will give us approximately 0 0.38. All right, then when we do the next one, it'll be 20 NCR2, where it's going to be 0 0.05 raised to the second power now, because there's two successful events, times 0 0.95 raised to the 18. We plug this in our calculator. And this gives us approximately 0 0.19. And then the last one, we have three of them. So it'll be 20 NCR3 times 0 0.05 raised to the third power times 0.95 raised to the 17th power. And this will give us approximately 0 0.6. 0 0.06. So 
So we would add all these up, 0.36 plus 0.38 plus 0.19 plus 0.06, and that is equal to approximately 99%. So we have an, a 99% chance of picking um, zero people or picking one person or picking two or picking three. All right, so we would add all those up. Now for the last one, it says at least three people. Well, at least is zero, one, I'm sorry, at least means three is the less that we can have, the least amount of number. So we can have three through 20. If we want to calculate that, though, that could take forever doing three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and all the way to 20. It's going to take a long time. But rather than doing that, we know that we have two events that can take place. We can have zero through two or we can have three through 20 because when we're saying at least three, it's either at least three or not. So instead of calculating all of these and adding them up, if we find the, the odds of zero through two taking place, we can take its complement. And we've already counted for zero, one, and two. So I'm just going to cross these out. So if we want to solve for zero through two, we would just add these up. 0.36 plus 0.38 plus 0.19 gives us approximately... 93%. Well, if we want to find, that's finding for zero, one, or two. Well, if we want to find at least three, we need to take the complement of this. So we would then do one minus 0.93, or there is a 0.0% chance, 0.07 or 7% chance of selecting at least three people. Because if you think about that, it makes sense that it's going down because it's not likely for us to pick people who are afraid of being alone in the house. It's only 5%. So the more you try to pick of, of that 5%, the lower your odds should get. All right. Um, so that is it for this question. But there's one more that we're going through and it for this video. All right. I'm going to go through this really quickly. Uh, it's really easy. We're still using our N as a total number of trials. Our P is still our success probability. And our Q is still our fail probability. Well, now if we want to find our mean, we just simply add our number of trials times just the probability of that successful tra trait happening. And then if we want to find our variance, we just multiply our number of trials, which are success and our failures. And then to take the standard deviation, we just take the, the if we want the standard deviation, we just take the square root of it. So we're just going to go ahead and do one problem. That's it. All right. So a die is, a die is rolled 360 times. Find the mean, the variance, and standard deviation. Well, the mean is equal to the number of trials times the success of of the event. Well, we have 360 and we're trying to find a number of fours. Well, the odds of rolling a four is one out of six. So 360 times one out of six is equal to 60. So the mean is 60, meaning if we were to roll a die 360 times, we can expect to get on average 60 fours. If we want to find our variance, that is equal to the number times our success times our failure. So this is equal to 360 times one over six times five over six. So 360 times one over six times five over six is equal to 50. So our variance is 50 and to find our standard deviation, sorry, to find our standard deviation, we just need to take the square root of our variance. So the square root of 50 is approximately equal to 7.1. So remember, this is telling us uh, our, our standard deviation is remaining. telling us our average um, distance from our mean. So when we're doing, if we were to do this, um, to do this, this test, we could actually expect to get anywhere from seven less than 60, so 53 or seven more. So 53 to 67, that's within one standard deviation. So that is the likely uh, scenario that could happen. Right? That is it for this video and that's it for this section.